I'm not only a life giver, but I'm also a giver of values and that I'm going to transmit to this uh, human being, mm -hmm. you know, and that there is almost this continuity that I'm passing on. My mom passed on some values to me and now mm -hmm. it's my turn to pass them on to my son. Mm -hmm. And I want this uh, passage, you know, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, to come from a very authentic place. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that if I tell my son, you, you can do anything that you dream of. You can be happy. You are an amazing person that I, that you know, that I live those things, that I live what I preach. Yo, what's up YouTube? What's up guys? Um, Amadeus here. Literally just arrived at my Airbnb here in Paris. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about um, the interview I did with uh, Ariadna from Blisshood. I usually don't do this, but I want to give you guys a little informal um, intro of what we talked about. Um, part of the interview did get cut off um, because of the, the, the audio, so I had to kind of like clip it together. But I, I want to give you guys like an intro to give you guys the full context of what the interview was about. But let me just show you my, my hair baby real quick. Let me just show you. Um, this is the, the living room area, you know. So it's, it's quite nice. Uh, I just checked in today and I'm really amazed by how this area is. Um, like a little vintage style to it, you know, a little vintage area. You know, see the rustic wood, you know, nice. When do they make houses with wood now? That's really a thing. Um, look at the kitchen, nice, beautiful kitchen. Um, yeah, the good, the that whole nice vintage style. Now there is a cat here, but um, I can't determine where the cat is at the moment. No, cat is hiding. Cat is hiding. Yeah, cat is probably hiding right now, but I'm allergic to cats anyway, so um, sorry you can't see that. But anyways, um, so yeah, I just want to give you guys a quick tour, and I want to get right into. Um, what this video is all about, essentially. Let me just show you my room. Um, and beautiful room, nice, clean, clear, spacious, comfortable. And it's funny because as soon as I came in, the host was like, don't put your stuff on my carpet. This is my new carpet. So I had to put all my stuff on my mat, <laughs> on this mat right here. And that's actually not a lot of stuff, guys. Like, I travel very lightly. Um, I believe in buying as I go, especially when I travel just buying and throwing away and like most of my stuff there um it's just my video equipment so my two tripods my cameras my lenses other than that very light um one thing i have to show you though is this right here man this balcony baby look at this view look at that look at this balcony man oh my goodness oh my goodness who is this who is this oh man yeah so that's my view let me just show you guys Put, turn the camera around a little bit you know so um boom that's my room just wanted to show you guys give you guys a little quick tour but more importantly let's get back into the video oh, i started this right so uh, earlier, earlier today i did an interview with ariana and um like i said previously there was a part of the interview that got cut off because my, my cameras died i'm just traveling right now and there's different outlets than what I usually have, so um, didn't get to like really fully charge my equipment. But um, she mentioned this why she started Blisshood, and she mentioned this in the video that she was she was living in Seattle, six months pregnant, and she abruptly had to move to France. Right, and she's gonna tell you about that story, um, in the interview. But one of the things that she said, she was like, well, she went through a period where, um, she didn't feel as confident as she should have felt. She didn't feel she didn't feel awesome. She didn't feel great because. She just didn't have that feeling, and she was telling her children, be great, follow your dreams, do this. And she felt as if that wasn't coming from a true place. So she turned her pain, you know, when she was in Seattle, she didn't. And she moved out here all the way to France. She felt isolated, she said. She felt like, um, yeah, she felt kind of lonely, you know. And she said, you know what, I don't want women to go through that, specifically mothers, expat mothers here in Paris. So she built a whole community for expat mothers, you know, to, to, you know, um, come together, but more importantly, be educated. So she brings in great speakers, talks about different topics, um, you know, and great events, informational, educational, inspiring events. So she has all these inspiring events that people can come through. And her philosophy is that, listen, 
if you as a mother, if you are educated, if you are inspired and you are empowered, then you can go and transfer that energy into your, your families and be a great mother and be a great wife. So her community provides that. Blissed is all about empowering mothers so that they can go and take on that energy and transfer that into the, you know, their, their family. So that's what Blissed is all about. That's why I love it, you know. Um, and for all of you mothers out here who's visiting Paris, I think she can in contact with her. All the information is going to be um, in this below and in, in, in this video. So hopefully um, you like the interview, um, like the whole thing. Subscribe if you have subscribed already so you can know, you know, get more, uh, you know, videos just like this. But yeah, enjoy the interview with Ariadna and yeah, hopefully, hopefully you enjoy. Cheers. Hey everybody, I'm Adaze here and today I'm sitting with a very, very, first off, this may not look good, but behind this window, guys, we're, we're in Paris at the moment. I haven't been in Paris in over a decade, so it's nice to kind of visit and you know, see what this area is all about. But enough about me. I see them as very special guests. They're beautiful, they're intelligent, they're brilliant, the, what's that word I'm looking for? The ambitious, Ariana. Um, thanks for coming in today. We, we met, well, we, we, we spoke on the phone a few times before coming here. And you have this amazing community for expat moms here in Paris. But before we get into that, I wanna know about your journey. So um, first off, how did you even arrive here in, in, in Paris? Um, well, I'm. First of all, thank you for having me in. Um, I am married to a Frenchman, mm -hmm. and we moved here six years ago. And it was, it wasn't planned to move to Paris. We mm -hmm. were living back in um, Seattle, and then all of a sudden he gets a call, and they say, uh, "We're not going to renew your work visa. You need oh. to move back to France, oh. to the headquarters." So all of a sudden we move back here. And, uh, you know, as John Lennon said, like, life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. Our plan was to stay there, and then we had to move to Paris. Uh, so it just happened. Wait, wait, what, what, was the, what was the quote again? I might have to steal that. <laughs> it's, um, life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. Wow. That's to me. I that, that. That's so true to me. And then, um, so how was that transition? You came from, you're originally from Mexico, but mm -hmm. you, you can't. From Seattle, right? You you were you were living in Seattle at the mm -hmm, moment. At the moment. You transitioned all the way here to Paris. Yes. You come to this land. You don't you don't know anybody. I'm, I'm assuming besides, no. besides your husband and my and your in-laws, right? And my in-laws and that. And so, how was that transition for you? Just you know, coming here and not knowing anybody and kind of had to restart your life. And I would say it was definitely tough. Oh. Uh, when you're a mom, especially in, in that third trimester, you you know you really want to be surrounded by your family and you start cocooning and um, I wasn't really having that support mm -hmm. around me. It was, um, I would say it was a dark period when wow. I experienced a lot of loneliness. Wow. And um, you know, this is at that time when you really want to feel supported, as mm -hmm. I said, and loved. And I wasn't really mm -hmm. having that besides my husband. Mm -hmm. I'm someone that is very social and I went from being someone very social to someone being very isolated. Wow. Um, and it was, the antithesis of who I am. Wow. And the beauty is you took that pain mm -hmm. and now you're creating it and turning it into a positive, a positive movement, a community that you're building, Blisshood. Yeah. Yeah. So would you mind telling us, you know, wait, what, was that the reason why you started Blisshood? Why did you begin, okay, okay you know what, I want to start a community for mom, expat moms here. Why did you decide to start th this community, Blisshood? But I would say that my own experience as an expat was a trigger. Mm. I said, if there is anything I can do for moms like me to not go through this isolation and confusion and mm. feeling lost, I will mm. definitely do it. But it was more of kind of like um, as a thought. And then it really became a project um, back, on, back in March 2000, I mean of this year, 2018. Mm. And there was something uh, that really triggered that and it was a networking event. Mm. Um, I, you know, I was working the entire day and being a mom is really tough, you know, to be a mom, a wife, and on top of that to have a social life. Mm. So after a long work day, um, I told my husband, could you please take care of the kids? There is really, there is this uh, really cool networking event happening mm. tonight. 
So it took a lot of like organization on my side. I even brought my clothes uh, with me to mm -hmm. work so I could transfer, I mean like transition from work mm -hmm. to <laughs> networking <laughs> event and look nice. So I get there, tired from a long day of work, uh, you know, making sure that my kids are taking care of the dinner is set so I can mm. actually go there. I get to the event and we start going around and introducing each other. And then someone says like, hi, how are you? What's your name? Blah, blah, blah. And at some point I mentioned the fact that I'm a mom. And this person says to me, oh, you're a mom? And you are coming to a networking event? You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be with your kids. Whoa. So to me, it started this kind of like... Um, uh, thinking process. First of all, how are moms being looked at in society? Mm. Where is it just as caregivers? I mean, do other people see us as more than that? And so I said, we need to change the way that society looks at moms mm. and to really empower motherhood. And I was literally, I had this question written down. Um, I said, well, first up, before I even get to this question, my apologies to you guys mm -hmm. and for you, like, what is blissed? I didn't, I didn't, I got into the why you started it, but what is blissed essentially? And I'll get to that question later. So Blissful is a community for expat moms and future moms. And our main mission is to make sure that um, expat women connect with each other. And we do that via events. Mm -hmm. But ultimately the mission is for moms to become change agents in their family and at work and their community and to find their own definition of bliss. So that's something I wanted to ask you about. Um, and I don't want to offend anybody here. I'm just, you, you mentioned it yourself. You said, you know, as mothers, you know, okay, I, you need to find a good husband that has a good job and be, become a mother, have kids. And that's pretty much what's expected of, of a woman. I don't want to offend anybody, right? But do, do you think, am I, am I wrong about that? Or is that what society says? Or? I think that's what society okay. says, that, not, that is not necessarily what women yeah. want or we, okay. you know. Okay, I just didn't, I didn't like that, that non-response there. <laughs> All right. So like, um, yes, yeah, so society pretty much expects women to, you know, be wives um, and, and mothers. But then you, wanted, you took it a step further. So listen, I don't want, I want to be more than that. Yeah, I think that there is all, almost like this sense of um, sacrificial mom, you mm. know, like... Um, the more you sacrifice for your kids, or, or there is almost like these unwritten expectations that you're supposed to sacrifice. And the more mm. you sacrifice, the better of a mom you are. Mm. You know, if you sacrifice your mom to be home with your kids, if you sacrifice this, if you sacrifice your body, you know, mm. to bring uh, a kid into this life, like the more you sacrifice in a way, the, the better mom you are. Mm. And I don't necessarily agree with this mm. image. Or that's how it has been, you know, for yeah. a, a really long time. Like, a good mom is supposed to sacrifice for her family and sometimes this sacrifice is uh, inevitable, you know, mm -hmm. if you're a single mom, of course. So, so why did you say, you know what, I want to remove myself from that stigma mm -hmm. and I want to start something on my own. Why did you remove yourself from that and say, listen, I want to do this? First of all, I want to let moms know that they are not alone. Okay. And if you are, there are choices out there. That, you know, there is a community out there like Blisshood mm. that can support you and sustain you. Mm. So first of all, you are not alone. Mm. That's why I wanted to send the message. Uh, not alone and what, for what reason? For example, you don't, you don't have to always sacrifice. Okay. You know, sometimes you sacrifice because you think that you need to do it every, you know, okay. you need to do everything on your own. Oh. And there might be someone that has um, the right resource or the right tip for you that mm. says, okay, this is maybe a way for you to make things a little bit simpler. Mm. And then for you personally, like, so, you know, you came here, you was alone by yourself. Mm -hmm. And I know you wanted to start this, mm -hmm. right? But then there was, there was some friction there. You said, like, I, I, I want to start this because, so why, why did you want to start this then, essentially? Well, at that point, it was my son. Mm. I realized that I'm a mom, mm -hmm. you know, and that I'm, I'm not only a life giver, but I'm also a giver of values and that I'm going to transmit to this uh, human being, mm. you know, and that there is almost this continuity that I'm passing on. My mom passed on some values to me, and now mm. it's my turn to pass them on to my son. Mm. And I want this uh, passage, you know, mm. for lack of a better word, to come from a very authentic place. Mm. And I want to make sure that if I tell my son, you, 
you can do anything that you dream of. Mm. You can be happy. You are an amazing person that I, that you know, that I live those things, that I live what I preach. Mm. So if I'm feeling uh, lonely and insecure and I said, you know, you are going, you can be social, you can have all these friends, believe in yourself, but I'm feeling insecure myself. I'm not necessarily coming from the most authentic place. Mm. So I want to make sure that, um, that there is um, truth mm. in what I said when mm. I pass on these values to my son. Mm. And since starting Blissa, do you think, is, is it achieving that or is it, are you on the journey to achieving that uh, feeling that you want for yourself? Definitely. Okay. I think that I, you know, this community allows you to, um, to define in a way mm. your own definition mm. of bliss. Mm. I am not giving, um, how can I say it? I don't say that I'm a perfect mom. I'm not selling um, an example of perfect motherhood. Mm. I'm saying I'm learning along mm. and I want each person to define their own definition of bliss mm. Mm. and to be, you know, um, change, like a change agent yes. for the better in their community, in their families, at work. Now, I must say, I must have to interject and say this is very inspiring because, um, you know, I come from a single mother background, mm -hmm. you know, um, well, my, my father passed away when he was, when I was very young. Um, so um, having that ambition as a, as a mother, I, I think us as children, we love to, to know that and our mothers are, are fighting, mm -hmm. they're, they're striving. So your children can't say it now, but they're very thankful. They're, they're very thankful that you're making this decision. So, because um, <laughs> how, they're six years old, right? So they, don't, they, don't, they probably haven't verbalized it, but yeah, I mean, I'm very thankful that my mother, seeing my mother strive and, and, and do those things, she never had to tell me to follow her dreams. She, she never had to say, I'm there to follow your dreams. Because just seeing how hard she worked, I, I understood it. So I think you're making a very great decision, you know, by, by working hard, because you don't have to tell your children to. They're, they're, they're going to know. She lived authentically and she then you got it. And then it. you picked it up, right? And you picked it up. So I'm, I'm, that's what I'm hoping to do with Blisshood. I want moms to live as authentically yeah. as possible so that, you know, they can inspire their kids yeah. and to be blissful. I mean, yes, there is some sacrifice, but there is also bliss out there mm. and you can choose that. Mm. So um, I would say if you have a chance, do it. Discover your own bliss. Mm. Have my phone here. <laughs> And uh, I like to, before getting to know you, um, I kind of just went on your profile a little bit. And there was this one post that really stuck out. You know, so remember this post? Mm-hmm. Right. I show it to the camera? I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, obviously there's, there's going to be something here. Um, but what you said is, this street here in Tillam is filled with signs like these. It reminded me that I'm on the right path mm -hmm. and that my family is here to support me. So how do you know that you're on the right path? Well, first of all, because I feel happy and things are just flowing. Mm. But I also know that I'm on the right path. On the right path, excuse me. When I'm making an impact, mm. when someone comes up to me and says, "Thank you so much for what you did," or uh, you know, being with um, this community is mm. inspiring, mm. or thanks to your event, I was able to um, regain hope. Mm. Or I know that I'm no longer alone, mm. that there is this community that supports me. So all those things, someone just saying thank you to you or saying you inspired me. Or um, sometimes even if it's not face to face, there is followers from the US or mm. from Canada. And, you know, when I post a quote that resonates with them mm. and they said, oh, that's so true. Or I needed to hear that mm. uh, or this just happened to me. Mm. I know that I'm on the right path. Mm. I might not change a thousand lives. But if I change one life and someone says mm. that resonates with me, I know I'm on the right path. So how do you know, well, okay, obviously when things are flowing, when things are going well, they're going good and all oh, things, oh, it's easy, it's easy to determine when you're on the right path and everything is going well, but... And when I'm fulfilling the mission as well. When you're fulfilling the mission. What about when things aren't going so well, when they're going south, when, you know, when there's actual friction? Mm -hmm. How do you still say, oh, I'm on the right path mm -hmm. when everything around you is, is pretty much hell. How do you know that you're on the right path when there's so much friction still? I think that when you experience friction, you need to think differently. Okay. You know, you need to be able to rise to the occasion. 
So um, I think that friction makes you grow. Uh -huh. When everything is just flowing, you're uh -huh. just like happy in your little boat, just kind of going with the flow. But when there is friction, you need to think differently, you need to act differently, you mm. need to prepare better. It's almost as if you are going to war, you uh -huh. know? You need to bring your tools with you and to say, okay, how am I going to win the battle? Uh -huh. So I think it makes you grow. Uh -huh. So what, what would be some advice to someone who is going through a little bit of friction? What would be your advice to get them out of it? To get them out of it? Yeah. First of all, start with yourself. Uh, prepare better, as I said. Mm -hmm. Imagine that you are going to go to battle uh, and start with your mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to go into friction, then uh, make sure that you are mm -hmm. really strong mm -hmm. and um, tough. Sorry, and tough. Yeah, I'm up, I'm up. I remember going to my, one of my lowest moments. My mom was like, oh man, I'm so concerned with you. I was like, I said, Ma, like, this, 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 this is how like, what you're doing is really good. I said, Ma, I said, I'm on my days. You, you did a good job. You don't have to worry. Okay. She felt like, she was like, she felt so calm. I was like, I said, Ma, I said, I'll be lying to you if I told you everything was good. And also if there is friction, that means that in a way people recognize that you're doing something. Yeah. Where they they say, huh, you know? Like this person is onto something. Yeah. So friction in a way means that you you are actually on a path. Uh -huh. And people said, We need to stop this person. So if if there is conflict, that means that there is something that they don't like. Uh -huh. You might be doing something great, but precisely because it's great, it you know oh, it kind of people, flutters. Other people, other forces, ne negativity. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, friction might seem uh, as a scary thing, but it might also say I'm doing something right here yeah, because sure. someone is bothered. So mm. hmm, they're watching. But that always brings the question of when you face enough friction, when do you quit or not? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into that, but I do want to finish the story with my mom because because like, for, for she's watching. And you're a mom, this is all about mom's hair. Um, I was pretty much going through my, my low moment, and she was like, oh, I'm so worried about you. I said, Mom, like, don't worry, man. Like, I said, you raised a good son. You know, like, I, I've, I've learned from you. I've seen you pull through at, 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 your, at your toughest moments. You know, so what you're doing right here, and what I love that you're doing, essentially, um, is that you're transferring that energy, transferring that knowledge and wisdom. Through your events, people come to your events and they, they get to learn they, and they're educated. And as the mothers, they get to use the energy to, to pass on to their children. And yeah. that's, that's what I'm so excited about, which the community that you're creating. Um, I think we're running a little bit late on time. So I do want to, if you could just share your platforms, the name of your Instagram, and your channels and whatnot. Yeah, so you can find us on blisshood.com. And our Insta handle is at underscore blisshood. And uh, most recently, we just went on Pinterest. And so I just love to pin mm. for all, um, all those of you that are on Pinterest. You can also find us there as blisshood. Mm. Two quick questions. Mm -hmm. Urgency or patience? Patience. Okay. And then Paris in one word. Unforgettable. Unforgettable. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, Ariana, for being a part of this. Thank you. It's been a crazy journey <laughs> behind those cameras, but we did it. I'm live here in Paris. Thanks for watching. Um, and to all the mothers out there, thank you for watching. And um, if Au revoir. You, yeah, and, and if you're coming to Paris and get in contact, obviously that that would be great for you. And we appreciate you watching. And thank you for watching. And be great. Au revoir.